Hello friends, it is I, Zoe, coming at you with less of a vlog and more of a cake. It was this very day, March 11th, 2020, when my city had its first COVID case. And it was also the day that COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. It is therefore only right that we commemorate this day with some sort of, I don't want to say celebration. It is therefore only right that we commemorate this day with a birthday party. Of course, this is not me celebrating COVID. This is me celebrating surviving a year in this pan pizza. It has been incredibly difficult uh, for some more than others, but in general, it's been a pretty rough time. I've been lonely. Mm. Ah, yeah. La, 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 la. La, la, la. Lonely. Okay. But we made it through, and that means that at this point, everyone has actually had a birthday in this Ponda replay. So, you know what? We all deserve cake. And in my very humble opinion, there is no cake more iconic than the Momofuku Milk Bar birthday cake. So, I'm gonna try to do that. I've been wanting to make it for a while, actually, and I found a copycat recipe, so this isn't exactly the way they do theirs. I know some of the ingredients are actually quite different. And then I'm going to make changes to it, so it's more like this is, this is just a sprinkle cake that is heavily inspired by the milk bar cake. But that's still going to be delicious, so let's go. And by let's go, I mean how about you go back in time, because I started yesterday. Okay, well, we'll meet back here. All right, okay. So the first thing you have to make for this recipe is the birthday cake crumbs. I mean, actually, you don't have to make them first. I just decided to make them first. And you start with a mixture of white and brown sugar and flour. Then you add some baking powder, some salt, and of course, everyone's favorite ingredient, rainbow sprinkles. You don't really need a stand mixer for that, but I'm going to need it anyway in a minute when I add in my oil and vanilla extract. Then you mix it together until you get little, like, clumpies. Um, it's said to spread them out and then make even more clumps with your hands, and I was being a little bit conservative when I did this. Looking back, I definitely should have added more clumps, but uh, here you can see me making a few. Then you bake them until they are golden and delightful. The next thing I did is bake my cakes. Now starting with softened butter, because you remember to take it out of the fridge, right? Because you're a plan ahead type of person. That's right. Mix that butter with white and brown sugar until it is beautifully fluffy. And if you forgot to plug your mixer in after making your morning smoothie, now would be a good time to do that. The next thing we'll be adding is eggs, so for our egg expert, please welcome Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe, and thank you for joining me in my poorly lit kitchen for baking, a master class. Chapter 1, eggs. Now my guess is you've been doing eggs wrong. Maybe plus I don't know you I don't know your life. But a good tip when making a cake is to take your eggs out ahead of time and let them sit at room temperature. I like to put mine in this little seashell bowl. My fridge decided to just shut up, so thank you for that. So tip number two is to crack your eggs into a bowl separately before adding them to your cake batter. I've only had a bad egg maybe a couple times in my life, but you don't want to find out that your egg is bad after it's in your batter. It's also just a lot easier to fish out any eggshell if you happen to get any in. Tip number three, stop cracking your eggs on the side of a bowl or any sharp surface. Crack them on a flat surface and I, it, I will, I would, I want to say I'll explain to you why, but I don't know the science. Look, all I know is it works a whole lot better this way. Ta-da! 
So I'm gonna add this to the cake and then crack some more. Here's what it is. I find that when you crack it on a sharp surface, even if the shell is like all shattery like this, the membrane holds together a lot better. I'd love it if this were in focus, but we can't have everything, can we? Welcome back to Zoe's Baking Masterclass, the class where I teach you how to be a master baker. Now, don't you hate it when a recipe calls for buttermilk and you don't have any because buttermilk comes in like one liter jugs and no one needs that much buttermilk for home cooking? Like ever? Well, have I got the tip for you. All you need is milk and either lemon juice or vinegar. So what I'm gonna do is squirt a little bit of lemon juice in the bottom. Like so and then just fill up the milk to the line where I need it. In this case, a third of a cup. That looks fine. And then we let it sit out at room temperature until it just curdles. And if it doesn't, just add more lemon juice. Just ruin the milk. I should also specify that this should only take like five minutes. Don't leave your milk out like overnight. That's just bad milk and you shouldn't drink it. Now, back to our buttermilk, which has delightfully curdled. We are going to add our oil and vanilla. You know what, never mind. I can't figure out how to do that math. So, I'm just gonna pour them all in separately. Thought I pressed record for that, but I didn't. So just enjoy the, the mixing part. Now remember kids, don't be like your Aunt Zoe. Prep your pans ahead of time. This recipe actually calls for one pan of a specific size that I do not have, so I did math, which I can sometimes do, and figured out the square inches that I would need, and I found two pans that would work for my needs. I hope I did it right. So we're just gonna line these babies with some parchment because we want our cakes to come out at the end. That's kind of important for this cake anyway. And it went like... And then we're just gonna grease the hell out of these pans with whatever we got on hand. I got butter. Now that our cakes are nice and baked, we're going to wrap them up and put them in the fridge to chill until tomorrow because it makes them way easier to work with. Oh, welcome back. I was just drinking water out of a teacup for something to do. I guess now that you're all caught up, I actually have to start the assembly process, which is a little intimidating. I, I shouldn't be because it's what I've been doing as my day job for the past several years. But at work, you get to know the consistency of the cake, the icing, you have your regular tools. I haven't tried this yet, so if it all goes terribly, we're still gonna eat it. All right, let's make some icing. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna actually put on an apron because I don't usually wear nice clothes in the kitchen, but it just felt like, it felt like the vibe.
last thing this buttercream calls for is a tablespoon of milk. Um, I'm gonna use heavy cream instead because I have it. But I always leave a liquid like that to the end because it is easy to add more liquid to an icing. It is so much harder to make it thicker again. So like add all the flavorings, everything that needs to go in there, whip it for a while, and then see if you wanna add uh, more liquid or cream or even corn syrup works sometimes too. So just wait. Also, you should always taste it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Also, I don't want to have to deal with this, but like, it's the internet. I'm editing out the many, many times that I wash my hands in between steps because your hands get sticky and you gotta wash them, but people are always so like, you're not wearing gloves to make your own food in your own kitchen? Like, calm down. My hands are clean. I mean, I've never seen anyone say that in one of my videos, but that's because I have like 20 people watching my videos and they're all my friends, so they're not gonna be jerks, right? So usually this cake is done in a six inch ring mold with acetate lining it. I don't have those things at home, uh, but I do have this six inch square pan and parchment paper. So I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna figure it out as we go along. Uh, but I've made a little template to cut out squares so I don't have to measure each one every time. And then we're just gonna do the best we can. I think this is perfect. Now this cake has a lot of different parts. We had to make the crumbs, the cake, the icing, and there's one more, and it may just be the most difficult of all, the cake soak. A quarter cup of milk and a teaspoon of vanilla. Avengers, assemble. So remember how I said that these crumbs didn't have nearly enough big chunks in them? Well, I pulled out as many as I could for the top because I thought that was the most important, and I'm saving the little crumbs for the center. So you put the cake soak on, and I realized that because I had put it like crust up, that it wasn't soaking in, so I just stabbed it a whole bunch until it actually started to soak in. Then a layer of icing. Then a layer of crumbs. And then repeat. Finish with a final layer of icing, smooth it out, make it all pretty, top it with your big chunky crumbs that you saved, as well as some little ones for texture, and then pop it in the freezer for a few hours to chill. I let mine sit overnight, and you'll hear more about that in a minute. Hello, it is the next day, as you can probably tell by my different hair and different clothing. I probably would have worn the same dress as yesterday, except when I was cleaning up the kitchen, I actually popped this button off. 
I guess the physical act of cleaning in combination with quarantine weight gain has just created some big mommy milkers that will not be contained by a lot of my clothes. So I just changed. Well, I'll sew that back on later. It'll be fine. I wanted to film the rest of the video yesterday, but I lost the light. So you get another day of me. Uh, it is warm today, but the cake is cold. So let's take it out. See, it's kind of wanting to come out. Yes, you see? You see that lift? We can do it, I believe it. I am the best. On this clip. This actually won't really fit. <laughs> There's like a dent, but I love the black color. And this isn't big enough. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a little combination here. A plate on plate. And now we let it thaw out and then we can try it. with me and I think we all know what we're wishing for. Yay! All right, it is time for me to now try the cake. Wow, that is good cake. So I already knew from tasting the scraps that the cake has this like crispy, chewy kind of texture. And of course you've got the cream cheese icing, which is delicious in itself. And then with the when you put it all together with the crunch in there, it's just, there's so much texture happening that you don't usually get. So this is the part where I really just wanted to eat cake and talk about my feelings. I keep saying things about my feelings and then stopping halfway through because I'm like, other people have it so much worse or you just sound like you're whining. But basically I kind of feel like my life has been on pause in a lot of ways and some people are also on pause with me um, because we have to be and some people are just going full steam ahead and it's hard not to feel really jealous and frustrated about the people who are going full steam ahead. And it's hard not to feel like I'm gonna be falling behind. I just feel really stuck and these videos have been a really good way for me to feel less stuck. Look, it's been a really friggin' rough time, all right? And we're all champs for making it through this. God, this cake is so sweet. <laughs> it's not like sickeningly, but if you don't like sweets, ooh. <sighs> All right, I have got to get editing this. I hope this inspires you to make something, be it cake or whatever, that you've been meaning to make or do anything that you've been wanting to do but hadn't given yourself the time to do it. That's a really vague statement, but I mean to say that I hope you have a great time. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs>